Lincoln is a big technology-based school. We do a lot here with technology. The kids got new Chromebooks this year. We do um, the PBLs, which we've been working on. The, but one of the things I've noticed is that the technology that we've implemented doesn't really seem to have affected our um, assessment scores very much. So um, what I would like to do is use my class and decide if um, there are effects for computer-based instruction on standardized reading scores. And if you will look at the chart, um, the last three years, actually the scores have gone down, even though we have implemented technology into our classes. I know I have used ActivelyLearn.com, several other English teachers have used that, um, other content areas have used several different kinds of, of, comp, of computer based instruction, and yet the scores are going down. So we need to figure out why that is. So my hypothesis for this uh, action research project is that as computer-based instructional time increases, standardized reading scores should increase as well. Uh, for this project, there are really only three terms that everybody needs to be clear on. The computer-based instruction, which is instruction that where the delivery and or instruction of curriculum is at least partially delivered through the computer. And again, I, for my project, I want to divide my classes and put part of them on the activelylearn.com. Um, English language arts, of course, is the curriculum that incorporates the teaching of reading and writing and listening and speaking and viewing. Um, and those skills used to just be English language arts skills, but they have been incorporated into all the content areas as well. So if we can get the scores up in reading, it should affect all content areas and not just English. And then a standardized test, which is one that is administered under standard conditions. So I did some literature review, some research, uh, to see what the impact of computer-based instruction is supposed to be. And Kulik and Kulik reported that 81% of the studies that they looked at indicated improvement in assessment averages. That sounds wonderful. We're just not seeing it. Um, Chung and Slavin reported a more positive impact on scores, however, when there was a lower intensity. In other words, if you put the kids on the computers too much, it starts having a negative impact. Uh, there is also that we need to align our instruction and our assessment. So Clark, Madura, and Dee discussed the need for similar methods of assessment and instruction. In other words, if we're going to assess them with computers, or if we're going to instruct them with computers, we need to assess them with computers as well. White and Giller discussed the pedagogical and intrinsic gains from interaction and feedback. And Means actually listed ways to align those, and he said they need to be consistent instructional vision, uh, principal support, and also teacher collaboration, that when everybody's on the same page in how to implement it, it works better. One thing about computer technology is that it's multi-sensory, and that's good for all kinds of learning. Um, Devlin, Feldes, and Ventrum reported higher critical thinking, uh, more responsive answers to questions, and more informative directions by students when they were instructed through computer-based means. And Sarah reported higher problem solving skills by students when they had been instructed through technology because again, it's not just reading, it's not just listening, it's reading and listening and hands on. So my plan is to use my two standard 10th grade English classes. Uh, my first period class has 26 students, my eighth period class has 32 students. And the activelylearn.com website, about half of what we uh, read in 10th grade English is on that site. So when we cover those materials, what I would like to do is put my first period class on Actively Learn and facilitate their learning that way. And then my eighth period class stay more traditional where we use the textbook in my lecturing and working with them um, as just whole class. And if we do that through the year, then we can use the STAR 360 data, which is about every other month, to benchmark their reading scores. And then at the end of the year, use their ACT Aspire scores and average those two classes and see which class actually improved in their reading score. Was it the computer-based class or was it the traditional-based class? So does anybody have any questions as far as what we're going to do? Um, you said you already started this in the mm -hmm. classes, correct? At this time, what do you, which method do you think appears to be the most effective? Right now, actually, the teacher-based is, is more effective. Some of that, I think, has to do with motivation. Um, you know, 10th graders are not the easiest kids to motivate. And when you put them on a site like Actively Learn, it can be engaging if the students like to read. But a lot of high schoolers don't like to read. So I'm constantly having to move around in that class and make sure that they're staying on the side and not doing other things and not being distracted by music 
for each other or just, you know, gazing off uh, because they just really don't like to read. But if I am kind of facilitating the class and leading the class in a direction, I can hold their attention better. So that's one of the things that we've got to, to monitor with the benchmarks so that we can adjust the instruction as we go. And out of curiosity's sake, um, I use actually learn in my classroom. Are you using um, pre-made um, through Actively Learn that, that come with the content? Are you making your own assessments on Actively Learn? Or are you doing a mix of I do both? both? I do both. I look at the ones that are already on the site, and um, I keep usually about half of those. The other half, I, I, I'm not going to say I don't think they can do it, but they tend to be geared towards higher level thinkers, and these are standard classes. Um, so I will pick and choose the ones that are already on the site, and then I will go back and add some more of mine. I have another question. Are you including students in the average that have IEPs and those that don't? I am, okay. because there are students with IEPs in both classes. And um, actually, the research says that computer-based technology should improve those students' skills even more than a regular student. Um, and one more thing, I'm sorry. Do you, are your students with IEPs, are they scattered throughout both classes, or do you have more in your digital-based class or more in your... I have a few more in my traditional-based class, but I have more students in my traditional-based class. Okay. So when I go back and do the data, I can actually desegregate that data and do averages for students okay. with IEPs and students, or students without IEPs. Any other questions? Thank you.